When you need to take your car over a lake, that's when a typical bridge comes into play. But what about if you need to take your boat from one side of a canal to the other across a lake? Well, that's a job for a water bridge. Today we're going to look at perhaps the most expensive and longest navigable aqueduct in the world, the Magdeburg Water Bridge in Germany. We'll see how this amazing piece of engineering was created and how much it cost. On top of this, we'll examine some of the best narrowboats and water bridges across the world. So let's get started. Based in the state of Saxony-Anhalt is the city of Magdeburg. The fabled water bridge nearby connects two canals, the 202-mile-long Middelon Canal and the 35-mile-long Elbe-Havel Canal. Beneath the water bridge is the River Elbe, a vital transport hub for commercial ships in western Germany as well as central Europe. When the bridge opened in 2003, it was reported that it cost around 500 million euro, or 595 million dollars. With inflation, that would be around 656 million euro, or nearly 787 million dollars today. In the past, canal boats, barges, or narrowboats from the Middelon Canal looking to reach the Elbe Havel Canal had to take a seven and a half mile detour. Firstly, they would need to get to the Rotten Sea boat lift in order to descend into the Elbe then sail down the river towards the Negripper Lock in order to reach the Elba Havel Canal. But even after all that, there were still potential problems. The River Elba occasionally had a low water level that prevented heavier narrowboats from crossing. As such, they would have to remove the heavy cargo before making the crossing, transport it across somehow, and put the cargo back on board the narrowboat, all of which makes the journey tiring for the crew and time-consuming. Altogether, the Magdeburg Water Bridge is 3,012 feet long, with 2,264 feet of the bridge being over land and 748 feet crossing the river. As such, it's considered the longest navigable aqueduct in the world. The bridge has even appeared in films such as 2011's Hannah. While the construction on the bridge officially got underway in 1998, the project had been bouncing around the minds of Germany's authorities since 1919. By the 1930s, construction on the bridge began. However, soon the country was in the midst of World War II, so the bridge's creation was put on hold in 1942. After the war, Germany was split into east and west. Due to this, the bridge's creation was shelved indefinitely. Yet once the Berlin Wall fell, Germany was reunited into one country in 1990. In response, the authorities began looking at transport links to help knit the two former areas together. So, the Magdeburg Water Bridge was suggested. And soon, plans to create it once again were underway. There was also an idea to extend the Elbe Havel Canal. However, environmental groups heavily opposed the idea. During 1997, the contractor teams of DSD Dillinger Stahlbau and Bilfinger Berger were chosen. At the time, the project was believed to have a cost of 210 million German marks, which is around 128 million dollars. And just like most building projects, the estimate was much less than the actual cost. For such a big project, a lot of material was needed for the bridge, not just to cope with the weight of the narrowboats, but also the weight of all the water. For steel, around 24,000 tons was required. That's more than the weight of two Eiffel Towers at 10,100 tons each. It also needed 68,000 cubic meters of concrete. For perspective, that's nearly two and a half times more than the water held in the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool with nearly 26,000 cubic meters. By 2003, the water bridge was open for use. At 112 feet wide and a depth of 14 feet, the bridge now allowed barge captains to stack up their vessel with cargo weighing up to 1,350 tons. That's around 96 times the weight a large truck can haul. Previously, the ships traveling were limited to 800 tons. In 2002, 4 million tons of goods were shipped along the east-west shipping route. Back in 2003, they expected it to reach 7 million tons by 2015. On top of allowing barges and narrowboats across, cyclists and pedestrians can also make the trip across the aqueduct. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing. Shortly after the opening, one of the locks reportedly snapped and flooded the bank in nearby street. But the Magdeburg Water Bridge wasn't affected. It could still work just fine. For those interested in getting a narrowboat and venturing the Magdeburg Water Bridge, be warned, it can cost a lot of money. A used narrowboat, such as a luxury class model that was made in 2018, can cost as much as $247,000. This grants you three bedrooms within the 70-foot vessel complete with a lounge area, a kitchen or galley for the sea folk, a bathroom and a seating area on the deck. The narrowboat also uses solar panels to power equipment, while four brand new boats such as the Aqualine Canterbury can cost $331,000 for one made last year. It has two bedrooms and two bathrooms within 68 feet. It has a kitchen with a dining area attached and a separate living room. 
There are extra features such as a washing machine, multiple TVs, a dishwasher, a freezer, and more. But if living on the waters full-time in a houseboat is preferred, there's La Vie and Rose. The 59-foot-long vessel has one master suite with the option of converting one of the rooms into a second bedroom or an office. It comes with a kitchen, a bathroom, and an open-plan living room. All of this costs £400,000 or $552,000. According to people that live on narrowboats, maintenance fees, on average, can reach up to $2,500 per year while a license to travel internationally can cost up to $2,350 per year. Before the Magdeburg Water Bridge came along, the longest navigable aqueduct in the world was the Briar Aqueduct. Located in the commune of Briar in France, the bridge helps channel the Canal Lateral à la Loire over the River Loire and connect with the Briar Canal. At 2,172 feet long, the bridge was first officially opened in 1896. Construction on the 20-foot wide and 7-foot deep bridge was overseen by famed engineer Gustav Eiffel. According to some reports, the cost of building the bridge was around $1.5 million at the time. Today, that would be nearly $47 million. While the Briar Canal was opened all the way back in 1642, the 35-mile-long stretch of water was believed to have cost 6.5 million francs, around $1.2 million, to construct during its opening year. Today, that would be around $285 million. Billed as the longest aqueduct in the world still standing, the Longden on Turn Aqueduct was the second to be made from cast iron. It only lost out on being the number one spot to the Derby Canal Bridge that was opened a few weeks prior. The previous water bridge that connected the Shrewsbury Canal was destroyed in a flood, so along came engineer Thomas Telford, who designed the one that became famous, the Longden on Turn Aqueduct. Based in the county of Shropshire, England, the aqueduct was opened in 1796. Telford was given the mission to make sure it wouldn't cost more than £2,000 or $2,750. Today, that would be around £246,000 or $338,000. The finished product is 186 feet long, 9 feet wide, has a water depth of 3 feet, and is 16 feet above the River Turn. In 1944, the canal was closed. As such, so was the bridge. By 1971, the aqueduct was given a Grade 1 listed status by Historic England in order to preserve its importance to engineering in the country. Final Fact Finish The current record holder for highest bridge in the world goes to the Doja Bridge in China. Opened in 2016, the bridge is said to have cost 1.023 billion Chinese yuan, or $156 million. This cable-stayed bridge is situated 564 meters or 1,854 feet above the Baypon River. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time.